Hey guys, it's Erica here from Big Cat Creative and today I'm going to talk about my six top Squarespace blog design tips. Squarespace blogging is super customizable, which is amazing, but there are a few keys to making your posts easier to read and just more user friendly, which will keep more people reading your posts, which is the main goal, right? So I'll show you those now. Let's jump in. My first tip when you're designing blog posts is to design in the visual editor. Now, this tip is only for Squarespace 7.0 users as Squarespace 7.1 only has a visual editor. So you can only design in the visual editor, which is a huge improvement. But for 7.0, you do have multiple options. So I'm just going to quickly show you what I mean by that now. So I'm going to head into the blog. And when you add or edit a post in Squarespace 7.0, you're going to have this pop up editor and you can actually add and edit your entire post in here. So I just put some text in and as you can see, when I hover over elements, I can click the plus icon and add any blocks. So this is essentially just like a mini editor. And I would recommend you pretty much never use this editor because it is just small and it's hard to see. And if you add blocks to it, they don't look right. It's a really weird thing that Squarespace has on Squarespace 7.0. And I don't really know why they keep it around. It's been removed on 7.1, thankfully, but it is still on 7.0. So definitely go through and enter in all of your settings while you're in here and use this as more of a settings panel. And you can start by putting your post in here if you want, but I do recommend clicking save on your post once you've just put some stuff in there and then hovering over your actual post and clicking edit here. So this is going to open up the blog post in a full front facing what you see is what you get sort of editor, which makes designing so much easier. So you have all the same blocks and control, except you can actually see exactly what it's going to look like instead of it all being squished into that little pop up. Once you are finished with this post, this is exactly what it's going to look like. So if you are a Squarespace 7.0 user, I highly recommend editing all your posts in the front end like this, and they don't have to be live. So you can just leave them in draft mode, which obviously I would recommend leaving them in draft before you're ready to publish. And to get to this section where you're seeing the post, you just need to click on the actual post. So it will open it up as soon as you click on it. So I can still edit this one here, even though it's in draft mode. So highly, highly recommend doing that if you're using 7.0. The second tip I'm going to talk about is how to position your images in blog posts. So adding images to blog posts is obviously amazing and Squarespace makes it really, really easy. You just click plus and add an image, but you might notice that your image is sort of in a weird place and there are some ways you can add images to posts that you might not even know about. So I'm going to quickly show you those now. And this applies to 7.0 and 7.1. It works exactly the same in both versions. So I'm just going to add an image here so I can show you. And firstly, you'll notice that this image is huge to move an image around or make it a bit smaller. We can use different blocks or we can drag it around. So first things first is I want to make this a bit smaller. So I'm going to add two spacer blocks and I'm going to drag them on either side of the image like this. So if you just want a plain image on the top of your text, you can use spacer blocks to bring it into alignment. But there are a couple of other image positioning features that people often don't know about, which are really helpful in blog posts. So you can actually drag your image to the side of your text by clicking and dragging. And you'll see that blue line show up on the left hand side of the text. And that is going to drag it to the left hand side. And if you do want to split this text up, we can just pop a spacer in between there just to break the text blocks up. And then we can drag this one maybe under the image. So now we just have this block here next to the image and then some more text underneath. So that looks a little bit crazy, but it's a really good example of what you can do by just moving around a few blocks. So you can get really creative with adding images next to your text blocks. You could do it all the way down your post. 
So I'm just going to put that text back to where it was and make everything centered again. And I want to show you one more thing that lots of people don't know about when positioning images and blog posts. So you can actually use your image and wrap the text around your image. So by clicking and dragging over your text, you can see those blue boxes show up and they're going to show up pretty much on every paragraph on the left hand and the right hand side. So if I scroll down, you'll see them show up. And basically this means that Squarespace is going to drop the image right there onto your text and your text is going to wrap around the image. So kind of like in Word, you know how you use a text wrap, it's just like that. <laughs> I'll drop my image there and you'll see that the text is actually wrapping around the image, which is really cool. And if you want to adjust the image inside your post, you can actually click and drag it inside the post. To bring the image in line with the text, you would need to use the site styles and go look at your blog settings because that's where this column width comes from. But lots of people don't know that you can actually use images inside your text with your text wrapping. So that does give you lots of cool layout options. The third thing I want to show you how to do is to actually crop your images inside the blog post. So if you have an image you like, but you might need to trim a little bit off it, you can actually just click on the image and this gray dot will appear at the bottom. If you click and drag this, it's actually going to crop your image vertically and horizontally, depending on how far you drag it up or down. And then if it is cropping out parts of the image that you don't want to crop out, let's say I want to focus here on my hair a bit more and less on my feet. I'm going to double click on the image to open up the edit panel. And I'm going to hover over this dot in the center and click and drag it. And this is called your image focal point. So it basically just tells Squarespace where you want the image to focus. So if I want to include more of this left hand side of the image, I'm going to click and drag the focal point all the way over to the left. And you'll see that it will change it inside this crop. So you'll only be able to use the focal point if you are cropping the image. If let's say I would put that back to where it was and bring the image back down to its original size. It's not going to focus more on anything because it doesn't have anything extra to focus on. It's only when you start cropping the image that you'll see the focal point working properly. So let's say I want to put my face in the corner and crop out less of it. I'm going to open up the image editor and I'm going to move the focal point up and adjust it to exactly where I want the image to focus on like that. So that's just a really, really quick and easy way to crop images inside Squarespace without having to take them into Canva or any sort of design software. Number four, I recommend keeping your column width narrow. You can see in this post that the column width is very narrow and you can set that in the design site style panel. In Squarespace 7.0, you'll find this under design site styles, and it's probably going to be under main content inset. So this might change depending on what template you're using, but you can adjust this to adjust the width of your columns. Now, just beware that this will actually adjust the width of your text on all pages on your site. So if you do make this change, then you'll need to go around and check the rest of your site and make sure everything else looks okay. I actually prefer to set the inset to zero, which obviously makes the column width much larger. And then going back into the post and adding spacers on either side of the page. Then it just makes the images a lot easier to handle. I know I showed you before when we put the image in wrap with the text and it was sticking out quite far. Now we're using spacers to control the width of the page. Everything is going to be the same height. 
So I believe that makes things a lot easier. And if you are struggling with your images and your text not being quite in the same column, then I recommend using spacers instead of using the content inset. So changing the content inset to zero and putting spacers on instead. In Squarespace 7.1, you can actually control that up here in the blog post settings. And you can just change the content width to narrow, medium, wide, or custom. I like using narrow because I just believe it is a lot easier for people to read. But again, if you do want to do images that span right across in a combination of things, then you can always use a really wide setting and then use spacers to bring in particular sections that you want to make more narrow. But generally keeping the text at a narrow width is going to help with the readability and it's going to encourage readers to stay on that blog post. Another fun design tip is to use different headings in your blog posts. So your blog post title should automatically be set as heading one in the back end of your site. And that is standard with Squarespace. You don't need to worry about doing anything else with the heading one. But throughout your blog post, you can use heading two, heading three, heading four if you have it to draw attention to more important points or bulleted sections or important information. So it's important that you do this in a way that makes sense. I wouldn't just use heading two, three, and four to liven the post up. I would use heading two, three, and four to make the post more structured and more readable overall. A good example of this, we can go over to our bigcatcreative.com website and have a look at one of our blog posts. So we do this a lot because we often do a lot of step-by-step -step information and it's really good to break things up with different fonts. So of course the header is always going to be the heading one main font and then from there we divide things up with heading two titles and then heading three steps within those titles. So you can see each main section starts with the heading two and then if there are subsections within the heading two section, we add heading three to break that up even further. So it's really a case of using these fonts sensibly to break up the information so your reader can digest it better. And it will also help with your SEO if you do this because it actually helps Google digest your information better and helps them understand what's important and what your post is about. The last one is a very simple step that I recommend everyone do on their blog posts, and that is to make sure your body text is left aligned. One of the worst things you can do for readability is center align your text. And I know it can be tempting to do that because you might think it looks better, but studies have shown that it is much easier for people to read left aligned text so unless you're doing some big heading or something that is really meant to stand out, always go with left aligned text in your blog posts. Awesome. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed those six tips for designing your blog posts in Squarespace. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, drop them down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.